of all the things that I do in my business, the most important thing, and I hope to inspire you to consider this for yourself as well, the most important thing is to stay in a consistent rhythm of creating. Creating free content, just like this video that you're watching, and creating paid offers as well. A consistent rhythm, just like, well, my body is consistent in keeping my heart beating, in breathing, in all the other cycles that happen in the body to keep me alive. The same thing with a rhythm of consistent creating. It keeps your business alive. And of course, if you're consistent and healthy with your creating, it, it makes your business thrive over time. Just like when our body rhythms are consistent and we are watchful and keep healthy rhythms, our bodies are more likely to thrive over time. It really is like that. And I've been saying this message for years. You know, it's funny. One um, Recently, I kind of, woke up to the fact that, wow, I have made almost 2,000 videos by this point and um, uploaded to YouTube. I made even more than that that I didn't upload. It was all on course platforms. So if you wanted to count those, that's way, well over 2,000 now. But just on YouTube, I've uploaded public videos, almost 2,000 at this point. I have on my website, published more than 300 blog posts. I've published hundreds more that didn't end up on my website. It was just social media posts um, that are connected to videos and things. But regardless, and I've now published, I've now launched um, well over 30 courses. About 20 of them are currently on my website, but over the years, probably more like 50 courses over the years. So, and of course I published five books Four of those books have second editions already. So all of this creating, I mean, I'm I'm just astounded because I'm still, I feel like I'm, well, I'm still me. <laughs> I'm definitely a different person than when I started this journey, but the time passed anyway. And this is what I want to impress upon you today. The time will pass more quickly than you imagine. I wish for you, a feeling of urgency when it comes to getting into a consistent rhythm of creation. I am so grateful that I somehow instinctually developed that urgency years ago. I wish I developed it in the beginning of my business, uh, and especially in terms of the, you know, kind of this, this aim towards a generosity of free content. I didn't, I didn't develop that urgency of generating free content until 2015. That's when I, you know, this is six years into my business. I suddenly realized, oh my gosh, the time is passing and I'm not creating my body of work. You have a body of work within you as well that is going to be really supportive of a bunch of people, you know, as they discover you throughout the years as you create and generate free content and put it on the internet. Urgency of creating consistently. Now, I know. For some of you, there are blocks to doing it. You have limiting beliefs. And I'll just kind of talk through a couple of those limiting beliefs. Hopefully, this will unblock you and unlimit you. All right? So one of the, and I have to refer to my notes at, at this point. One of the limiting beliefs is, well, George, I haven't figured out yet my, my niche. I haven't figured out who my ideal audience, who am I really trying to reach? And what am I trying to, 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 to offer them? Listen, 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 listen. I'm still trying to figure that out, okay? Are you kidding me that you are supposed to somehow figure out your life's work purpose, you know, and then go about doing it? I mean, that sounds, I guess that sounds right. Oh, you got to put the horse before the cart, right? Of course, you got to figure out your niche and your life purpose and your and whom you're supposed to be serving and based on your skills and integrate all of the things and... Listen, 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 listen. As you go along in life and as you serve a lot of clients and as you create a lot of things, 
you will learn so much about yourself that you realize, oh, wow, I have no idea what my niche really is because look at me, I'm, I'm really thriving in this offering. And look, when I, when I talk about this, I suddenly come alive. I didn't even know that three years ago, okay? Or th three, three weeks ago or three days ago. So listen, I, I've said this in another video before, but I mean, if you, if you are really interested, if you really are getting a lot out of niching yourself and doing that work, great, wonderful. You know, I, I, I don't, you know, I, I, I want you to do the work that, you, that makes you feel like you're thriving. Great. But if you are saying, and maybe for months now, maybe even for years, well, I got to figure out my niche and ideal audience and offer. And then, and then George, I can get into a consistent rhythm of creating. You're stuck. You're stuck. You're blocked. If I mean, even if you spent more than three months stuck like that, you're stuck, you're blocked. And I experienced that myself in the beginning. This is why for six years, I didn't create consistently because I'm like, oh, I got, I'm still figuring out my, my framework. I'm still figuring out what my niche is going to be and what I'm going to really offer once I grow up. No. And then I re realized, oh, I'm never going to figure it out. I mean, not to the extent of the finality and the clarity that's like for the rest of my life or for the next 10 years. No, 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 no. We, we, we create into our clarity. We experience into our true niche by experience. I mean, we keep on creating and serving and experimenting. And as we do, we find more and more of ourselves and we find more and more of that perfect intersection between what brings us alive and what brings the world alive when we share it. How can you know that intersection between, you know, your dance with your audience, your dance with the rest of the world, your dance with everybody outside of your own head? How can you find that intersection unless you're dancing with them? unless you're creating and sharing and see what comes back as a reaction or no reactions oftentimes, or no, you know, no engagement oftentimes. That's how I did it. In the first year of my creating, I created, you know, five videos a week, five blog posts a week. Most of them are, are not on my website, but I created a bunch of those and didn't get engagement from, from much of it, but I, I had to practice. And I'm so glad I didn't get a lot of engagement in the early days because I look back and well, I'm kind of embarrassed by my early stuff, but it's still up there. It's still up there. You have to, you have to create to get good. And you're not getting engaged. If those of you who are creating, you're not getting much engagement because your content's not that good yet. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you you're very smart. You're beautiful. You have a great presence. Those are all true, but your skill of creating and communicating and putting content up it's just not that good yet. That's why you're not getting much engagement. I'm sorry to, to tell you the truth. Part of the skill you develop is the intuition for what the world wants from you. The, the observation for when I put this stuff out there, every time I put this kind of stuff out there, they respond. Every time I put this kind of stuff out there, crickets, nobody responds except crickets. You hear crickets, that's about it. That intuition doesn't get developed until you put a lot of stuff out there. You know, I, I've been telling my 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 students who are taking my YouTube course, listen, a hundred videos should be the first goal that you have when you are getting good at making videos or writing blog posts or any kind of creating. One hundred is the baseline for when you start your pro journey. Everything else in the in, before that is just amateur. Everything else before that is just practice. You're just getting comfortable on camera. You're publishing all of these publicly. That's also part of the practice. And that's also part of the sensing into, oh, look, that the audience seems like this. The audience didn't find that that valuable or find didn't find that interesting. That's okay. The algorithms will naturally bury the things that aren't interesting for your audience or for the world. And it will naturally raise the ones that the world finds interesting. It's the beauty of the market. Okay. So a hundred is the is is the bare minimum as a start to okay now i'm starting my my honest journey as a writer i've written a hundred blog posts now and published them now i'm beginning my honest and genuine journey as a professional writer 
Before the hundred, it's all just practice. It's amateur practice, flailing around, <laughs> publishing all of it. Same thing with videos. Before you make a hundred videos on YouTube, you're just you're an amateur. You're just pra you're just practicing. You're just trying to get comfortable with camera, with clicking upload, with all the things that go into upload. This is all practice. A hundred is the baseline for when you begin your real life online. Okay, a hundred videos, a hundred blog posts. Okay, and I would say those two. I mean, a podcast, the same thing. Don't don't quit until you get to a hundred episodes. Really? No, do not quit. I I made the mistake in my first podcast that I quit at seventy seven episodes. I wish I kept going because I was just getting into a rhythm here of. And trying to figure out what I'm trying to say, 77 episodes. And then oh, you know, it's like, well, now that I've got 100 episodes on this second podcast, oh, okay, now I'm, I'm getting to a rhythm here. Don't, so 100, of course, takes time, you see. And when I started in 2015, it, this, this journey of creating, I said, all right, five pieces of content per week until I get to 100. There's no excuses. Oh my gosh, it's 11.50 p.m. I haven't created today. Well, I got 10 minutes. Make a quick video, quick video. All right, everyone. I'm just, you know, I'm going to uh, see what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about this. It is surprising how smart and capable you get when you give us, when there's a real due date, a deadline, whatever you want to call it. And there, every day there's a natural deadline. The sun rises, the sun sets. Notice how consistent nature is. That should be a clue for us. Nature is extremely consistent. Sun rises, sun sets. The sun doesn't go. In. Today, I just don't feel like uh, raising. There actually, there, there, <laughs> there was one day in, in when I was living in San Francisco when the California wildfires were so great that literally woke up that day and there was no sun for the entire day. It was it was orange, orange, dark, orange sky the whole day. That was one day. That was that was an exception where the sun decided to. I'm making a joke, but the sun decided to take take a break. And I believe in breaks too, by the way. I should I should mention, you should go look up my video about content sabbaticals. I take a content sabbatical once every four to five weeks, just about once a month. I take a content sabbatical for a week, no creating, okay? But, but I'm a pro now. So taking a week off every four to five weeks, I think is, I'm very consistent doing that too. But when I'm not taking a break, I'm very consistent in creating. And I want you, I hope, to inspire you to get on this journey of 100. And for those of you who have gotten to 100, congratulations, join the club. Now your next journey is 1,000. Now, to be honest with you, I, I like I said, I have almost 2,000 videos. I do think, I, I'm not saying there's a magic, something magical happens with your body at 100 or at 1,000, but certainly I'm getting regular clients from YouTube, from my YouTube videos now and from my blog post and from my podcast and from the social media that I'm so consistent on, I'm getting regular clients from all these different sources on the regular, regular people regularly buying my courses, saying they came from YouTube or they came from this or they came from that, all the places where I'm regular. But the places where I've been regular the longest is where I get the most number of clients. I get way more clients and, and purchases of my courses and, and inquiries about my programs through YouTube than through my podcast. Why? Well, YouTube, I have almost 2,000 videos. My my current podcast, it's only, mm, I think, almost 200 episodes, not like 2,000. You see what I mean? And on my other social media, Instagram and Facebook, I have well over, you know, um, I don't know how many posts I have. I can I can check my Instagram. But um, but it's it's the it's the the consistency is what builds up the numbers. If you're not consistent, here's what happens. Yeah, I mean, I know some of you are like, well, George, I'm, not, I'm just not consistent like you. I'm not a machine. I'm not a robot. I'm a human being. I'm organic. I, this is why I'm not consistent. What, what kind of excuse is this? Your body is organic. And how come it's so consistent? And how come when you're not consistent with your self-care, your body breaks down? Hmm, interesting. <laughs> or nature is very organic. But why is it why is gravity consistent? Is there anything more organic than nature and the laws of physics? I don't think so. Right? <laughs> right? Gravity is very consistent. You toss something up, it goes down. No, no, no question. Right? Sun rises, sun sets. Water always flows downhill. Very, very consistent. The Tao is extremely consistent. You can't get more organic than the Tao. 
We're not talking about becoming a machine. You're just making an excuse because you got a monkey mind. Your monkey mind is what's making up all these excuses. But by the way, monkeys are also very consistent. Funny thing about monkey mind, monkeys are extremely consistent. Look at their patterns, feeding, sleeping, grooming, playing. Monkeys are very consistent. I don't know where the monkey mind comes from, right? <laughs> right. So whatever excuse you're making, organic is extremely consistent to be healthy, to be healthy. Talking about organic and healthy food, right? If you're not consistent with eating healthy food, organic, whatever you want to say is healthy for you, your body breaks down. You're not emotionally happy. This consistency stuff is proven. It's not proven. You, you notice it in your own life. You don't brush your teeth. What happens? Yeah, you have dental problems. Got to be consistent with all this stuff. Create. If you don't use a muscle, your muscle withers. If you don't consistently use that muscle, your muscle withers. You can't get strong if you don't consistently practice a skill. Right now, I'm learning Qigong and Tai Chi. If I don't consistently practice, I don't feel the energy. I don't feel it. But when I consistently practice, oh, there, there it is again. There, there it is again. I, 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 I want you to have, a have the urgency of getting back into consistency of creating. Because creating is just like a muscle. And it's just like a skill. And it's just like self-care, self-care for your creativity and fitness, self-care for your business, the consistent create, the consistent rhythm of creating. And so other, um, let's see, other, other limiting beliefs that I often get is, well, George, what if, what if I lose, this is a big one. What if I lose people based on a bad first impression? This is why, George, I'm preparing so much. This is why my YouTube channel doesn't have any videos yet. I'm, I'm making videos, but I'm not uploading them on, on YouTube because, you know, what if I make a bad first impression? I got to make videos that are really good first, and then I'll start uploading. Okay. So first, first of all, I have made so many bad first impressions you cannot even believe. I've been around here, well, like I said, I've been creating since 2015. I've kept everything up publicly online. I'm proud to say that. And I'm an example for you. That's, this is my point. Okay. Everything I made, all my first early videos, all my bad videos, it's all still online public. My bad blog posts, my bad podcast, everything is still online. Go to my YouTube. Notice there's almost 2000 videos. Do you think they're all great videos? No. Out of the, I think it's at this point, it's 1800 or so, around 1800 videos. I'm getting close to 2000 at this moment. 1800 videos you think they're no out of my 1800 videos um i've been i've been curating the the, the best of my videos and i think out of, out of 1800 i think i have something close to 300 videos that are good enough that i call my best of now not even all the best of aren't aren't like great but they're definitely better than the other ones so that's what's uh 300 divided one out of six one out of six of my videos in other words let me say this a different way five out of six of my videos, I think are, are not worth watching. And only one out of six are worth watching. But the five out of six that are not worth watching, they're still on my YouTube channel. I still keep them up. A lot of people still stumble upon them. Sometimes they watch my best video and then YouTube recommends another video that I don't think is that good of a recommendation. They have a recommendation engine you know, called For You, F-O-R-Y-O-U, For You. And sometimes I see the recommendation. I'm like, I don't know why they recommend that one. It's not that good. But they do. And so I trust me, I'm making plenty of bad first or second or fifth impressions, making plenty of bad bad ones. And yet my business is still thriving. You, it, when, if you get yourself stuck with the first impression mentality, you're going to be stuck for a long time. You're, you're going to be always stuck. You're going to be always in fear is what that is. It's your fear. Are you going to are you going to give in? Are you going to feed your fear? Because that's exactly what it is. Fear of bad first impression or 10th impression or, oh, I don't want my next impression to be a bad impression. That's fear. And you're feeding it. And I say to, to heck with it. I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to practice, 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 setting aside that fear to say, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm going to surrender. I'm going to surrender to the Tao of creating and just say, I don't know what's good. I don't, I'm not going to be the judge of what's good or not. I'm going to let the algorithms tell me I'm going to let the data tell me 
I'm like, essentially what the algorithm the data are, they're saying what the humans are telling me. Like that they're summarizing human reaction and say, yeah, that video wasn't very good. We're gonna the algorithm will naturally try to bury it, even though YouTube sometimes recommends things I don't like as much, but most of the time they re recommend my better videos, most of the time, because they have more data than me about what humans actually watch, right? And so please let go of bad impressions or let go of I'm not clear yet. That all gets sorted out when you create, as you continue creating, as you continue exploring through your creation. You're, I'm exploring right now, as you can tell this video, right? Explore map, but it's it's in a very important part of the process. Get to a hundred, all right. Get to a hundred, and celebrate for sure. And once you get to a hundred, guess what? Get to a thousand. And now that I'm almost at two thousand, I can't wait. Celebrate at two thousand videos, and then I'm like, great, five thousand is my next milestone. I'm gonna keep going. But every every thousand that I go, my business just keeps thriving. I mean, my business is thriving more than. And as ever has been since 2000, not ever, you know, more than any other year, my business is thriving because of my consistent rhythm of creating. Get urgent about it. The time is going to pass. I can't believe I've made 2000 by this point. The time passed. What happened to the time? I felt urgent about creating every single week and every single day. I'm not saying you have to create every day, but whatever rhythm you have, get really urgent about sticking to that rhythm. That's one thing I, I think much of life can be relaxed. This, this should not be relaxed. Much of my life, like I said, is very relaxed. The only thing I'm not relaxed about is, oh my gosh, am I on my rhythm of creating? If not, let me set aside all my fears, practice setting aside all my fears and anxiety and just create and surrender. Surrender to the divine results, right? The results are not up to humans. It's up to the divine. So get going, get urgent to get back into your rhythm of creating. I hope this is helpful.